everybody, my name is Rachel Nelson. I played water polo here at UCSB. For students who are having troubles in any of their classes, what I would recommend to you is to um, kind of look at previous exams and your notes and how you studied for those exams and see what was effective for you and what wasn't. So I'm sure that when you were studying, there were some things that you picked up easily and that was for a particular reason. You may have spent more time problem solving on a um, certain number of questions dealing with that particular concept. And then there's gonna be other questions that you may have just glazed over and you thought you understood it because a professor did it and you thought it made sense when someone else did it, but then you couldn't do it yourself when it came time for the test. So there's varying degrees of um, misunderstandings that can come into it when you think that you understand a um, problem that someone else does. Um, so I think it's very important to reevaluate how you're preparing for those exams. Um, if things worked for you, definitely continue doing those and continue using those skills. Um, but if there's something that's not working for you, you're going to have to try something different and alter however you're approaching it. Um, so different ways that I've kind of thrown out there to my students in order to change up your study skills. Um, I think the, the singular most important thing to be doing is practicing those problems, especially when it comes to chemistry, whether it's general or organic chemistry. Um, so the volume is not necessarily um, what you're after, just like the sheer magnitude of questions that you're answering. If you understand a concept and you're fine answering any question regarding that material, you don't really have to spend that much time on that anymore. Um, go to the questions that you really seem to have a problem with. And when you try those problems, don't just look at the question and then flip over to the answer after giving it a try for about two minutes. Really try to sit down and tease it out. Really try to struggle with it. I think there's a lot to be said about struggling it and using grit in order to get through it. Um, so if you, if you get to the end of dealing and wrestling with this problem and you still have no idea what's happening, then go ahead and look at the solutions manual only as far as you need to in order to get through the section that you're struggling with and then go back to the problem and continue to struggle with that um, and see if you can tease it out from with that extra information. So what I find um, has always helped me is this type of approach where I just sit down with the problem and I try to work it out and sometimes I get through it and that's memorable because you found an answer to this complex problem. Um, sometimes you don't and sometimes you have to use the solutions manual in order to continue on. Um, and that's also memorable because it's something that was so hard that you needed to look at the solutions manual. So there's a lot to be said about this um, type of studying. Um, I, I did an experiment on my students recently um, using the same kind of thought process um, where we were looking at the citric acid cycle in 109C and I gave um, an example of uh, trying to go from um, step two to step three essentially of the citric acid cycle. There's a small uh, reaction that's taking place and I challenged them to without looking at their notes or their lecture um, try to come up with the mechanism going from step A to step B. So um, what I was seeing my students doing was they were really, really focusing, really focusing on how to get from step A to step B because I told them that they knew everything that they needed to know going into that problem. And when I told them that, there was a whole different change in attitude, how they were approaching the problem. Everyone was very focused on that question. And a couple days later, I asked them the same question and most of them remembered how to do that exactly. So I think that is the most memorable way to study and approach those different problems. Um, but it's, as far as other kind of studying tips, again, it's the quality that you're spending, um, not the quantity. So regarding spending more time struggling with those problems. Um, but also another thing that I find is very challenging to students is the time restraint on tests. And that's usually the, um, the problem that students will have. They'll, they'll tell me that they know how to do the problem, they just ran out of time. And so um, dealing with that sort of situation, I think it's very important to prepare for the time constraint. Um, so when you're taking um, a practice test or something before your midterm or your final, um, time yourself. And it is going to stress you out a little bit, which is good because you need to practice in that stressful environment in order to succeed in a stressful environment. So it's, it's two, it's just kind of a win-win situation. You're gonna see if you can finish the test on time and it also adds that extra stress factor that you will have when you're taking your actual exam. 
So I think both of those things and just reevaluating how you're studying and what is effective for you and what's not, um, those things can definitely change the way that your the rest of your quarter or your semester is going to go.